Okay. So here's John. We're at Alico Family Golf Center on the par 3 course. 53 yards. He's picked his intermediate point. He's playing a little draw. That's great alignment there. Good. A little crosswind prevented that from coming back in, but perfect distance. Hey everyone, Sean Clement here. Uh, Richmond Hill Golf Learning Center on location at the Alico Family Golf Center with my good friend John Carroll, JMC on the forum. And uh, it's a little it's a little crisp today according to John's rules, but I mean I'm just happy to be down here hitting on, on grass and outdoors. So we're playing this wonderful little uh, par 3 hole about 53 yards. And uh, this course was designed uh, with, with the practice of the short game in mind, so the, the, the longest hole is 70 yards. And, and we're just having a fabulous time here. The greens are just the right size because when you're, when you're hitting from that distance into the green on a par 5, you're hitting to a specific section of a green. So that's the size of the, the, size of the greens that they have here would, would make like a subsection of a green that you would be playing on a normal golf course. So the, it's, it's really, really cool for targeting, number one. They got some, some you know, we're going to be playing some cool little bunker shots off this uh, waste area here. Coquina shells, what you were talking about, right? This is really nice textured stuff. So I picked my intermediate point. I got the wind coming out of about 11 o'clock. I'm going to play a little fade back into this fifth hole. I got my intermediate point right there. Line up to that. Play the ball a smidgen forward. Close the face a smidgen less. And now all I'm doing is focusing on the left side of that hole, right over that intermediate point, to deliver my cut. So I see my dandelion stem, I feel the weight of the instrument, and I'm going to use the weight of that instrument to cut through the dandelion stem. Oh, that looks pretty good. Just over the flag stick. A hair just over the green, which basically puts it at about 20 feet from the flag. Not bad. We'll go try and chip that one in. All right, so John, you want to land that basically what? About a foot onto the green? Okay. Fantastic. Get in. Just lipped out. Nice par, man. So, what John was doing. As he was setting up, and we were talking about this before, he's picking a spot on the green, and then he's figuring how much momentum he needs to cut the dandelion stem to land the ball there. And what a fabulous job that was. So I'm going to go, I'm at the back of the green there, I'm going to see if I can get inside that one. Okay, so, I'm going to try and follow up John's little, uh, little chip shot here. I have my intermediate point. I've noticed when I've been taking my little practice swings that the, because it's a new course and the Bermuda's a little sticky, I'm opening up the face a bit more so the sole of the club that, you know, raises the leading edge a little bit more off the grass so I can get this nice cut along the ground. So I'm going to open up the face a bit more for this particular chip. So momentum in that direction, land it one third, roll it down the other two thirds. There we go. Just a little bold. That was just perfect contact on this Bermuda. I'm starting to get, get my, my teeth back into it. Hey everyone. So John and I are here at the Alico Family Golf Center in a, on, a, on that new little par three and we're, we're having some fun with it. There's not too many people out because it's a little cold today. So we have this, uh, this amazing texture of sand that we have uh, called... Coquina. It's crushed coquina shells. Crushed coquina shells. How about that? We don't we don't get that in Toronto. <laughs> so this uh, it's got an amazing texture. So in the sand, what we're doing is we're using the sole of the club to move sand onto the green where we want to land the ball. So we're we're going downwind, so we don't get a bunch of shells in the in the eyes and the face here. So we're going to use the sole of the club to spray the sand onto the part of the green where we want to land the ball. In this case here. We're short-sighted big time, so we're going to go over the bridge onto the onto the the hump there, just in front of the green. And because it's a waste area, we can take a practice swing. That's part of the rules. So what John's going to do is he's going to feel, he's going to, he's going to spray some sand over the bridge and feel how much momentum he needs to get the ball over there. Awesome. 
How'd that feel, John? Not bad. All right, give it a go. Let's see what happens. Awesome shot. Wow. So far. Well, that landed pin high, everybody. So because the greens here are very firm, it's a brand new track, uh, you've got to land the ball very, very soft. So he needed to land it about uh, maybe eight feet short of that. Brilliant bunker shot. That's exactly what he was looking for. So I'm going to take a practice swing as well to feel how much momentum I need. Oh, look at that. That, that is so easy to spray. Now for many of you, you'd be looking at this and you're thinking, I need to get more under the ball. So let's take this opportunity to help you with, you know when the sand is really compact after, after a big rainstorm, it intimidates a lot of you because you feel that you can't get under the ball. Well, I got news for you. There is no under the ball. All there is is just taking sand and spraying it in the direction you want the ball to go. So I'm literally taking the sole of the club and spraying sand with the sole of the club, that angulation of the sole, onto the area where I want that ball to land, which is just a little short of the green, right between the two posts of that bridge. I'm going to use this as the intermediate point. There it is. So I see myself using momentum, the weight of my arm club unit, to spray sand over the bridge. Oh, landed on the down slope just past that. Right up there next with John, just over the back. So, hope you enjoyed that. This is a lot of fun, John. Can't wait for our next shot. We'll see you in a bit. So in this particular shot, uh, John and I are going to demonstrate the two options you have for a very short chip shot. So we got a very firm surface here. We just want to land the ball in the front and let it roll to the hole. So John's going to do the open face chip and I'm going to do the uh, very, very short chip shot like I did in one of my past videos where I'm holding the grip like I'm holding a putter and I'm going to use the toe of the club and a putting stroke to land it very, very short and to deaden that impact. So what we're trying to do is to deaden the impact. So opening the face and having a more glancing blow through the cut is going to do that for you. So if you've got a little thicker grass where, and you'll notice that there's, a, there's an application for each one of these. This one that John is doing is for when the grass is very thick and you need some, some good momentum to get through the grass. And what you're going to need to do is use your standard grip, which has a lot of compression to get through the grass, but then we want to deaden the impact through that open face so the ball lands soft. Okay, go ahead, John. So he's taking his normal stance, his normal alignment, and he's just going to use the leading edge of the club to saw through that dandelion stem with momentum. All right, wow, did you see that? It landed almost at the flag and it's only two feet past the flag. That's amazing. So that really deadened the impact. So you, what would you just, just use a little less momentum, right? And on this firm green, I'm surprised that ball didn't roll further. That was fantastic. So if we do the opposite, notice when I hold the club like I'm holding a putter. So the two different grips, your standard grip where you're clamping down, the heel pad is on top and you've got really nice compression with that lead hand. But then if you take the club and you put it through the center of the palm, notice how the two pads are on opposite sides of the grip. Now I got this big gaping hole here. That's what I, I would use to putt. Notice how the shaft is a natural extension of my forearms. So I take my putting grip and you can go look at my video on that title. And when I use my putting stroke, notice the heel of the club comes off the ground and I'm going to have to use the toe of the club to perform my task. But I'm still going to lean forward, weight forward, hands forward, and it feels like the, the handle of the club is going to go right up against the, uh, the, the, the inside of my wrist here, the back of my wrist. So now I can just use a nice putting stroke and you'll notice how soft, so I'm cutting the dandelion stem with that, with the, uh, the toe of the club. So the toe of the club, let me show you that again, the toe of the club deadens the impact big time and because my grip is not as 
compressive, there it is, get in, how about that? So because my grip doesn't compress the ball, the transfer case of energy is much, much more limited now. The, the ball comes off the, the club face much, much softer. So I hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you in the next one. All right, John. Lovely, lovely shot. Beautiful. So as you can see, everyone, you know, what's really cool about this golf course is they, they put some beautiful little humps and bumps all over the place. So you're out here in the afternoon and there's like just two other people on the golf course and we're practicing our short game. And here you, you see a beautiful hump here. We're going on the uphill slope. And what John just demonstrated so beautifully, you'll notice how his weight was on his downhill leg and he was using momentum to cut the grass up the slope and at the end of his swing you notice how he didn't try to shift his weight up the hill. If you try to shift your weight up the hill inadvertently you're going to change the angle of attack because you're trying to lean into the hill and then you're going to just stab the side of the hill. So especially with Bermuda grass we want to make sure that we're cutting grass along the slope so we don't get gougy and we get this lovely soft contact and especially with these firm greens John Man, that's like two feet, man. That's a little bit of a challenge. So, right over that hump, I see the dandelion stem that I'm going to cut through. So my eyes are right there between the leading edge of the club and the ball. And I'm going to use momentum to cut through that dandelion stem, keeping this bolted into the ground, back and through. So down the slope, up the slope. Hold my finish. I just kissed Johnny's ball. How about that? I just nudged him closer though. So on the way up, hold the finish. Notice how I'm still bolted on that back foot. Don't try to shift your weight up that slope. Let's have a look at ball down the hill. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Excellent shot. That's like two feet past the hole. So. I wish you guys could see the shots that John is hitting. I'll, I'll take a picture of on the green afterwards. On the other side of the hump, you'll notice how John was getting set, braced against his lead side. And remember that little chat we had about that lead knee and how Brandel Chambly was showing us how all the greats, the holy grail of golf, that left knee behind the ball, turning your back to the target, turning a big hip turn. Well, this is where, again, another drill where you can train it properly. You get on a nice downhill slope and you cut grass back and through, up the slope going back, down the slope coming through, and you feel how braced inside that forward ankle you are in both directions. Well, if you're braced inside that forward ankle in both directions, that, that knee will not be protruding because if it protrudes, you're going to feel the weight go to your toes immediately. So. I cut the grass up the hill, down the hill, up the hill, down the hill, inside ankle, inside ankle, left knee in, left knee in. So there's your, your tidbit of training as far as that's concerned. I'm going to get my intermediate point right over that hump. Got it. I'm braced against my forward side, ball I hear back is center. So now I'm just cutting grass down the slope in that direction using momentum. Up the slope down the slope over that hump using momentum. So mine's a little short, John's a little little past the hole. Yours has a chance to go in. Never up, never in. We'll see you later. Alright, so there you go. I promised you. There's John picking up my ball. Go ahead, pick it up, John. Yeah, mine's good, right? <laughs> and there's John's just past the hole about a foot and a half, two feet. Right on. <laughs> 